Okay, so first, help me welcome Mr. Roel C. Parangat Jr. from the University of the Philippines, Diliman, as he presents their work entitled Land Suitability Evaluation Using GIS and AHP for Solar Farm Sites in the Province of Quezon, Philippines. Good day, everyone. My name is Roel Parangat Jr. And together with me are my co-authors, PJ Capio and Darlin Tandang. We are students from National Graduate School of Engineering at UP Diliman College of Engineering under the supervision of Professor Ayin Tamontong. With the main themes of this study, Renewable Energy and GIS, we are excited to share with you today our paper entitled Land Suitability Evaluation Using GIS and AHP for Solar Farm Sites in Province of Quezon, Philippines. In the next 10 minutes, we'll be discussing the following points. So to begin, I'll give you a brief background of our study. We can all agree that the pressing issue of climate change has transitioned from mere theory to multifaceted challenge, impacting both global temperature and energy availability across nations. Extensive extraction of solar uh, of energy from fossil fuels since the industrial era has driven global warming. Fossil fuels, including coal, oil, and natural, natural gas, currently fuel over 80% of the global energy production, as documented by Sharabe and team in 2022. Not only do these energy sources raise environmental issue, issues, but they are also limited in supply, possibly leading to significant energy price hikes. Recognizing this, the, Nation, uh, the United Nations integrated sustainable energy into their 2015 Sustainable Development Goals, aiming to combat poverty through clean energy solutions. Their visions for 2030 envis uh, envisions accessible, cost-effective, dependable, and renewable energy sources for all. Amid these challenges, solar energy emerges as beacon of clean renewable power. It currently constitutes 1% of the global energy mix and 5% of the renewable sources, according to Ricci and the team in 2020. In line with this, the Philippines has enacted the Renewable Energy Act or the RA9513 in 2008 to transition towards renewable energy. The National Renewable Energy Program or NREP aims to align the nation's sustainable energy goals targeting 15,304.3 megawatts by 2030. Moreover, the Geographic Information Systems, or GIS, is emerging as a pivotal tool in energy planning. And although, of course, GIS has a lot of other uses in geoplan geospatial planning and data analysis, but for this study, GIS is used to facilitate the identification of suitable solar farm farming sites. GIS when coupled with multi-criteria decision-making techniques like the analytical hierarchy process or AHP enhance sites uh, selection accuracy. Quezon province in Luzon Island is the area of the study. It is the eighth largest province in the country spanning around 9,000 square kilometers and divided into nine, uh, 39 municipalities. But despite this, in the recent DOE report, Quezon is listed among provinces grappling uh, with an insufficient electric supply. The Pagbilao and Mauban power plants with collective capacity of 1,155 megawatts annually solely rely on coal. While a new power plant is in its planning stage, it's important to highlight that no solar power plant currently operates in this region. The study's significance lies in three main points. First, enhancing renewable energy capacity is vital to combat um, climate change. And for the Philippines, solar energy may be the best option due to our favorable location. Second, the Philippines faces a considerable challenge in meeting its renewable energy targets, lagging behind 74% 70 
as per uh, the May 2021 DOE report, threatening our energy future supplies. So in essence, analyzing state lands using tools like multi-criteria uh, analysis or HP and GIS can accelerate clean energy growth, addressing supply gap and emission reduction goals. As for as per the objectives, in, in our study, the focus is clear to identify suita, uh, suitable sites for solar energy farms in Quezon. The additional objectives involve integrating geographic information system and analytical hierarchy process to determine suitable renewable energy sites, following the literature established sustainability definitions. Thank you, Wax, and good day, everyone. For the methodology, we have two streams of data. Let's start with the secondary data. Here we have six layers as factors for solar farm site selection. Elevation, land cover, solar insulation, road proximity, protection buffers, and slope. These layers were processed accordingly, for example, projection or surface analysis, so that they can be used for overlay analysis down the line. For primary data, we have the survey for our analytic hierarchy process. The six layers were divided into three aspects, technical, economic, and environmental. Key informants were there asked from different sectors, but are in one way or another involved in renewable energy to perform pairwise comparisons for these aspects so that we can generate weights for each of the six layers. It was found that solar insulation, or the potential due to the intensity of solar radiation, is the most important factor. Once layers were processed in GIS and their respective weights were generated using AHP, weighted overlay analysis was performed to create the final suitability map. We also had the reclassified maps for each of the six layers mentioned earlier. For each layer, breakpoints were determined using related literature so that we can categorize their values into four levels of suitability. We have unsuitable that is represented by red, yellow for low, light green for moderate, and green for high suitability. What we want to highlight here is the map for slope. We adopted a maximum slope of 2.1%. So any slope greater than that is, is deemed unsuitable, making slope the most restrictive factor in this study. Later, the final suitability map that takes into account all of these factors will be shown. But before that, we also determined the top three municipalities with the highest potential for solar farm development, namely Mulanay with 76 hectares, Humalig with 59, and Katanawan with 22 hectares of highly suitable areas. To add another filter to the site selection process, we only considered areas that are at least 5 hectares. This eliminates small patches of land that realistically are unlikely to be developed as solar farms. Thank you, Tim. And now, we will summarize our findings and discuss our research implications. The results showed that the province of Quezon has a highly suitable area of 119.61 hectares for solar farm development. This constitutes for a mere 0.1% of the province's total land area. Further, the Humalig Island in the northeastern part, a remote island, provides an excellent opportunity to install solar farms since these communities are deprived of access to electricity. Therefore, this study has not only identified the potential locations for solar energy farms, but it has also identified how it is feasible to, con to combine the GIS and EHP for ground truthing and application in the field of renewable energy, such as installing renewable projects. And, and lastly, these are the references that we use in our study. We would also like to acknowledge the following agencies to, for providing us with the data and guidance to accomplish this research study, namely the Provincial Environment and Natural Resources in the province of Quezon, Office of the Provincial Planning and Development Coordinator in the Provincial Government of Quezon, Department of Public Works and Highways in the Quezon 3rd District Engineering Office, Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines, and the HP respondent in the academe, industry, government, and NGO sectors. Thank you, that's all from us. Thank you for your time and thank you to the Project CNAC team for this opportunity to present our research. All right, thank you very much guys for your presentation.